May 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapter 1 from the Old Testament. King David was very old. Even when they covered him with blankets, he could not get warm. His servants advised him, A young virgin must be found for our master, the king, to take care of the king's needs and serve as his nurse. She can also sleep with you and keep our master, the king, warm. So they looked through all Israel for a beautiful young woman, and found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very beautiful. She became the king's nurse and served him, but the king did not have sexual relations with her. Now Adonijah, son of David and Haggath, was promoting himself, boasting, I will be king. He managed to acquire chariots and horsemen, as well as fifty men to serve as his royal guard. Now his father had never corrected him by saying, Why do you do such things? He was also very handsome and had been born right after Absalom. He collaborated with Joab, son of Zerah, and with Abathar, the priest, and they supported him. But Zadok, the priest, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, Rei, and David's elite warriors did not ally themselves with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, cattle, and fattened steers at the stone of Zoholif, near Enrogel. He invited all his brothers, the king's sons, as well as all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, the elite warriors, or his brother Solomon. Nathan said to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, Has it been reported to you that Haggah's son Adonijah has become king? behind our master David's back? Now let me give you some advice as to how you can save your life and your son Solomon's life. Visit King David and say to him, My master, O king, did you not solemnly promise your servant, Surely your son Solomon will be king after me, he will sit on my throne? So why has Adonijah become king? While you are still there speaking to the king, I will arrive and verify your report. So Bathsheba visited the king in his private quarters. The king was very old, and Abishag, a Shunammite, was serving the king. Bathsheba bowed down on the floor before the king. The king said, What do you want? She replied to him, My master, you swore an oath to your servant, by the Lord your God. Solomon, your son, will be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now look, Adonijah has become king. But you, my master the king, are not even aware of it. He has sacrificed many cattle, steers, and sheep, and has invited all the king's sons, Abiathar the priest and Joab the commander of the army, but he has not invited your servant Solomon. Now, my master, O king, all Israel is watching anxiously to see who is named to succeed my master the king on the throne. If a decision is not made when my master the king is buried with his ancestors, my son Solomon and I will be considered state criminals. Just then, while she was still speaking to the king, Nathan the prophet arrived. The king was told, Nathan the prophet is here. Nathan entered and bowed before the king with his face to the floor. Nathan said, O master, O king, did you announce? Adonijah will be king after me. He will sit on my throne. For today he has gone down and sacrificed many cattle, steers, and sheep, and it has invited all the king's sons, the army commanders, and Abiathar the priest. At this moment they are having a feast in his presence, and they have declared, Long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me, your servant, or Zadok the priest, or Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, or your servant Solomon. Has my master, the king, authorized this without informing your servants, who should succeed my master, the king, on his throne? King David responded, Summon Bathsheba. She came and stood before the king. The king swore an oath, As certainly as the Lord lives, he who has rescued me from every danger, I will keep today the oath I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel. Surely Solomon, your son, will be king after me. He will sit in my place on my throne. Bathsheba bowed down to the king with her face to the floor and said, May my master, King David, live forever. King David said, Summon Zadok the priest. 
Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. They came before the king, and he told them, Take your master's servants with you, put my son Solomon on my mule, and lead him down to Gihon. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet will anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpet and declare, Long live King Solomon. Then follow him up as he comes and sits on my throne. He will be king in my place. I have decreed that he will be ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, responded to the king, So be it. May the Lord God of my master the king confirm it. As the Lord is with my master the king, so may he be with Solomon, and may he make him an even greater king than my master King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah son of Jehoiada, the Carathites, and the Pelathites went down, put Solomon on King David's mule, and led him to Gihon. Zadok the priest took a horn filled with olive oil from the tent and poured it on Solomon. The trumpet was blown and all the people declared, Long live King Solomon. All the people followed him up playing flutes and celebrating so loudly they made the ground shake. Now Adonijah and all his guests heard the commotion just as they had finished eating. When Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he asked, Why is there such a noisy commotion in the city? As he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of Abiathar, the priest arrived. Adonijah said, Come in, for an important man like you must be bringing good news. Jonathan replied to Adonijah, No, our master King David has made Solomon king. The king sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah son of Jehoiada, the Carathites and the Pelathites, and they put him on the king's mule. Then Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anointed him king in Gihon. They went up from there rejoicing, and the city is in an uproar. That is the sound you hear. Furthermore, Solomon has assumed the royal throne. The king's servants have even come to congratulate our master, King David, saying, May your God make Solomon more famous than you, and make him an even greater king than you. Then the king leaned on the bed and said this, The Lord God of Israel is worthy of praise, because today he has placed a successor on my throne and allowed me to see it. All of Adonijah's guests panicked. They jumped up and rushed off their separate ways. Adonijah feared Solomon, so he got up and went and grabbed hold of the horns of the altar. Solomon was told, Look, Adonijah fears you. See, he has taken hold of the horns of the altar, saying, May King Solomon solemnly promise me today that he will not kill his servant with the sword. Solomon said, If he is a loyal subject, not a hair of his head will be harmed. But if he is found to be a traitor, he will die. King Solomon sent men to bring him down from the altar. He came and bowed down to King Solomon, and Solomon told him, Go home. God, I think it's uh, amazing that David, a man after your own heart, He's on his deathbed. He he doesn't even want to have sex. He's on his deathbed. And here's all these people bugging him. And, and I realize they're bugging him because pretty soon he's going to be dead and they're going to and they are already fearing for their lives based on this coup that's happening. But what I what I love is even though David is is on his deathbed, he's possibly in a lot of pain. He still is thinking clearly in the sense that he is thinking all about you they keep coming in and saying uh, praise the lord god of israel and, and may he make solomon even a better king than you are you know any king for the most part is going to have a huge ego and i would think that that would bother most kings um, but not david because he says the lord god of israel is worthy of praise because today he has placed a successor on my throne and allowed me to see it. So even as, as David's in incredible pain, his life is coming to an end, his reign is coming to an end, all this drama is happening around him, even in the midst of all of this, he worships you, he praises you, and he gives you the glory. So no matter what 
David did, what sins David did throughout his life. His heart was yours, and he knew where his heart always went, which was to you. To always praise you and give you the glory no matter what happened. God, thank you for sharing such a powerful story of an amazing man where we can see ourselves in David so much by all the times he screwed up. (laughs) David screwed up a lot, um, and we screw up a lot. And yet you love David, and you made him a promise that the Davidic line would eventually result in Jesus Christ, our King, our Savior. You know, in, in Kings and different parts of the Bible, I I get really frustrated at the people. I guess they remind me a little bit of kids of wanting something. We already have you, God. We already have the best of everything we could possibly have. Uh, But we want a king because everybody else has kings. So we want a king. (laughs) And you can just imagine little kids saying that. I know I already have like the best of the best and you guys take really good care of me. But I really want that shirt by such and such brand name. Or I really want to go to such and such event because everybody else is going. And they continue to get kings and they continue to mess up and they get continue to get kings and they can continue to get messed up and we we see so clearly that division between the two kingdoms, between Israel and Judah, even watching uh, Adonijah invite one group, the royal officials of Judah, and not invite the people from Israel. So we're starting to see clearly defined lines between the two kingdoms where you had always wanted them just to be one people for you. And out of this, we're going to see this amazing theme that we've already started to see, which is this remnant, this peace that keeps coming out. These people that are solely focused on you, God, that keep coming back to your glory and your grace and your mercy and your love. This remnant that keeps going on from generation to generation. And God, I just pray that that we will be a generation that will grow that remnant for you. It seems like the world is getting worse and worse. And there just seems to be less and less people willing to stand up for, for what we believe in. Um, everything in the Bible and our relationship with you. Some people who are standing up are losing their life over it. It's getting a little bit scary out there. But I know through your strength that remnant will remain. And I hold on to that promise of yours. Not only of eternal life, but that you're sending your son Jesus Christ back. And I'm holding on to the promise that every knee shall bow. And everyone proclaim that you are Lord. So no matter what happens, whether we're on our deathbed dying and people are frantic about their own lives. Or end of times uh, seem to be happening. Or even drama in our own life. Hopefully not a royal takeover, but other drama in our life. That we can just keep going back to the peace that you've offered us. That peace comes in a promise of our son Jesus Christ. And the freedom we have from his death. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.